Today's video is all about the world border, but mostly all its technical aspects. Everything I'll be showing today I've already posted on the technical wiki. So first things first, entity collisions. What entities can go through the world border and which ones can't? So river skulls, fireballs, eggs, experience bottles, all throwable potions, ender pearls, snowballs, arrows, tridents, and the ender dragon can all go through the world border. Other than that, droppers and dispensers can also shoot items and other entities outside of the world border. So now, let's talk about how the player himself can go outside of the world border. First things first, slash TP obviously works. Uh, another method would be throwing an ender pearl or eating a coarse fruit. Or you can use a spawning condition, such as a minecart or a bed. And then if the world border is shrinking, you can also just walk through it and let it shrink past you. Blocks. Players are unable to place blocks outside of the world border. Although, there are ways around that. This is because hitboxes are not able to be interacted with outside of a world border. Basically, if you go and hit the inside of a hitbox from this side of a world border, you can place a block on the outside. You're also able to place a block directly on the outside if you can touch it. So I can demonstrate. Like so. Pistons, and especially sticky pistons, are able to push a block outside of a world border if you've done so like this. There we go. Fluids are not affected by the world border. Other blocks which can be placed outside of a world border are a bed, which will automatically place its second part on the outside, and scaffolding, which doesn't respect the world border rules. We're now going to look at some more interesting stuff. The world border is currently the only way to create a B36 in 1.17. You can do so throughout a bunch of different methods. So right here, we basically have a observer and a normal piston. And I'm going to push them using two sticky pistons here, which get updated by this observer. What happens is the piston gets put on the other side of the world border and then the observer updates and powers it. Uh, in this state, when you relog, this is not visible, but there is a server-sided hitbox still here, which causes your client to glitch out of it. But the B36 is actually on the outside of the world border and is projecting its hitbox onto this side. Another way of getting a B36 would be pushing a block against another block at the world border. Uh, this is going to look a bit weird on the client. So on the client, it seems like the two blocks have merged together. Uh, what actually happened is one block, the glass, was pushed into this side of the world border, but as a B36. And so the client is still rendering the B36 here, and the server is putting a hitbox here. Although if you relog, this glass will not be visible. Another way of doing this is by just pushing a block normally against a world border using a normal piston. Even though it may not seem like anything has happened, 
This block has now been turned into a B36 and is on the other side, and is projecting a hitbox onto this side of the world border. Again, if you relog, this glass will not be visible. Now we're going to look at the third weird effect that the piston has. If the piston extends through the world border, which it can only do if there is a block that can be broken by a piston in front of it, it will seem as if it doesn't do anything, but then you'll see it still retract. If you break the piston while it is in this form, it, the uh, server-sided hitbox will be displayed over here, and you'll still be able to interact with it, although the B36 is on the set of a world border. You can also do this one block further out, except the piston would stay in a interesting, it would just stay extended, although again that is all client. The last most interesting thing about the world border is block breaking progression saving, which is something I hinted at in one of my last videos. Basically, if I start breaking this cobweb, and then push this ancient debris in the way, it will almost seem like the progress of me breaking this block here was moved into the ancient debris. This technically could increase your speed of mining by around 10%, but nothing more. So let's give an example. So what's happening here is I'm creating the damage onto the cobweb. I'm then going to look at the world border, which has a block behind it. This is going to save my progress of breaking, and I'll be able to break the ancient debris much faster. There you go. And that's it for this video. Hope you guys learned something, and make sure to go check out the post on the technical wiki if you need any more information.